I'm Derek, as he said, and uh, Shadow DOM is this new fancy thing they introduced in the new web components, which is basically the whole purpose of all these web components is to widgetize and encapsulate widgets, that way they don't get messed up by other things living on your web pages. And Shadow DOM is probably one of the more mysterious ones, <laughs> as the name suggests. So it's all about the encapsulations, baby. And this is a reference to uh, Weird Al. You know, it's all about the names. <laughs> but imagine you have a widget. This is pretty common. Uh, the text for this doesn't really matter. I can't even see if get the scroll to work. But this is just an image slider. It has a whole bunch of input fields and images and labels. And then it has a whole bunch of CS related to it. And as you can see, these class names are kind of very simple. And this is essentially where the problems can lie. Because, but here's what it looks like, and it works. You know, it's very pretty. <laughs> but, yeah, so that's cool, but that's a lot of code. It's kind of messy and it's prone to failure because if any of the CSS changed or like your class names change or basically you know anything, it could be JavaScript, CSS, it could be DOM IDs, it could be anything and your image slider on your main page could just break and it could be when you're not even toying with it. You know it's one of those things where you toy with it, you get it working, and then you forget about it, and then one day you find out that it hasn't been working for a couple months. <laughs> so, uh, you know, all those things could all break your stuff, which is very bad. Especially frameworks. Yeah. So even if your code is uh, indestructible, you have to admit that something like this looks a lot better. I mean, and that's essentially, this is the point you could get to with web components. Now, this is a little bit of a simplification because you still have to write the templates and all the stuff to get your code to this point. But this is the only part that's going to be like messed upable, I want to say. So, web components, it's a set of standards for building widgets which can be reused and won't break, <laughs> assuming you don't do anything stupid. But I think that goes with most everything. You just have to try harder to break it, I guess is the point, because of the encapsulation. Like, encapsulation. Don't worry, we'll, in five years we'll all be relying on breaking it. <laughs> okay. So, um, the web components is composed of template, shadow DOM, custom elements, and packaging. But for the point of this, I'm going to be mainly focusing on the first two, and I'll, I don't know, I don't even know if we'll get to the custom elements. Uh, but should know that Shadow DOM fixes a fundamental problem of DOM trees inside of widgets, that uh, DOM trees inside of widgets aren't encapsulated and fixes it by doing it. So, uh, the shadow, essentially what happens is with Shadow DOM, elements can get a new kind of node associated with them, and that's going to be your shadow root. And then any element that has a shadow root is a shadow host. And then the contents of a shadow host aren't rendered, it's the contents of the associated shadow root. And they're kind of really confusing names. <laughs> But essentially, you just need to know that the shadow root's what's being rendered and the shadow host is what hosts it. Okay? Or, no, I flipped that around. No, I got that right. <laughs> <laughs> so, for example, this is, this is the sim. What? Can you make that a little bigger? Oh. I mean, uh, that's where it's I can't see anything. All right, stand up. Okay. Sweet. So, for example, um, this is the simplest you could have is a button and then you just do a little bit of JavaScript and you set up your host to be your queries, 
query selector and you send in you know the CSS selector, but in this case it's just a button, so I just grab the button. And you create a shadow root, and then you you know you can set the text to it so you can manipulate that HM, H, uh, that HTML object and instead of a button that says hello world, you're going to get a button that says puppies because that's what we told it to do. And then if any JavaScript or anything were to try to get the, the text of that button, instead of getting, um, I believe instead of getting puppies, they're going to get the hello world. I should have wrote a note about that. I think I had it in my slide notes, but if I'm wrong, you could just beat me up or something. <laughs> so, going back to the other thing, let's see if I can open this one more time. Oh. oh, if you hold down command when you click on it, it will open a new tab. It did. Oh, uh, it's probably, it's, it probably opened, you just oh, had to tap it. Yeah. Okay, how do I exit full screen? <laughs> Okay, here we go. Okay. So, um, yeah. so one of the things that Chrome has that helps you with this. So I don't know if I want to show. So we have this template and the HTML for this. So essentially this is the same thing as on the other page, but in the body we have this template, and then we have this div clash image slider, and then that is all the page sees. And then the script is this. But Chrome has this nifty feature where you could actually inspect the shadow elements. So if you really want to, you could see the shadow root and see the stuff that's being rendered inside of it. But all your JavaScript and CSS, like the CSS that affects the page, won't affect this. And that's why this template has its own style tags. And like you could have tags, that you could have CSS rules that would absolutely just mess up your site and you wouldn't have to worry about it because it can't touch it. And vice versa, the CSS that affects your page is completely, you know, won't mess up this stuff. So this is essentially just the same thing, but it's encapsulated, which is pretty cool. How do you associate the CSS with the template? Is it like the lib and the source together? Yeah, it's, well, it's actually a style tag inside the template. You see right here, template, okay. like style. So you literally wrote it right there? Yep. Okay. Can you use external style sheets inside of there? Or? I think so. I didn't do it for this example. I didn't try it. But I'm pretty sure you could still just have references like style, link. Can or, you can you not you can't ask, you can't change the internals of the widget? You can't style the widget the way you want it to if you if you want it to. Is that true? Um, you could do crazy stuff like CSS variables and other things. I don't get to in this talk, but I do have a link to it at the end, and there's a lot of crazy CSS uh, selectors that came out just for this. Like you could get the context post, and uh, you could figure out like there's a lot of cool, crazy things you could do. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of just briefly touch upon a lot of this stuff. But what I wanted to show, oh man, okay, so. Um, there is the show user agent shadow DOM, and if you enable that, it lets you look at more of this stuff. But I think it was already. I forget what that lets you do, but yeah. So now we could um, actually go inside this image slider. You know how earlier when I showed you this actual div where it was rendering everything, it was just image slider. You turn on that setting in your dev tools, it'll actually let you browse inside of it. 
So that's kind of cool. Because this is outside of the template. Mm -hmm. So that's what just happened by turning that on. And if I were to turn it off, be hidden again. Your web page still can't access it, but this is a great way to debug your templates and things. Okay? So. Let's make an Apple joke. This is like modern iframes, right? <laughs> kind of, in a weird way, except it's not a separate web page. That's the nice thing. Or it was it someplace yeah, else? One web request. Yeah. You know, you don't need to already have HTTP2 and serve it on the same server. Um, so if you hit command, uh, control, oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's the same image slider. Um, wait. I think I didn't show how we were actually doing the JavaScript for that. And I open that tab a lot. Huh. <laughs> okay, so here's the, the script for it. And we, it's checking to see if it already exists, and if it isn't, it creates it. And uh, we create the template here by finding that template tag. And then we create the, the host node for it. Well, we select the host node for it. And then we create the shadow root on the host, and then we append the template to it. And that's as simple as it gets. Um, now, you can do more crazy stuff with it, but the thing I try to do, um, you can set up these content tags, and then so we could have replaced that inner part on that page with these content select and then just have it be like a placeholder for a variable that you pass in. So then it would simplify the, this would have been inside the template and then it would simplify the HTML to being passing in all this stuff. And you could go even further and create uh, custom elements that would replace this div class image slider with a element tag of just image slider. But my example for that one broke. <laughs> I can't figure it out. So I skipped it. And then things I probably don't have time to talk about. So there's a whole bunch of new CSS selectors. And you could have this host selector and it basically you could do like the host, which would be the host node, and then you could have like hover and focus and active, and then you could style it differently based off of that. So it's a way to still get your user state styling in your CSS. And oh wait, I didn't finish that slide apparently. Sorry about that. But then, so there's a whole bunch of things, and the one that's really cool, I probably should zoom out now. The one that's really cool that I didn't get working was this custom elements. And that's definitely the one I'll check out. But uh, HTML5 Rocks has a whole bunch of ones on it. And it's Shadow DOM, Shadow DOM 201, and Shadow DOM 301. The 201's basically the CSS stuff. Um, 301 is, uh, I think, like JavaScript manipulation of templates and things like that. And the first one is just the basic stuff kind of that I presented. And the the HTML5 Rocks also has a visualizing Shadow DOM con concepts, and it's an example page showing you, like, when you mess, with, mess around with the template and uh, your post node, how it affects what's being rendered, and it shows you, like, this graph diagram of everything going on. So it helps kind of understand what's going on. Really helpful for when you're toying with it. You guys have any questions? Uh, yeah, the template, uh, the, where you were loading the, the image, the images, there was a dot slash uh, for the resource, resource URL, 
Source equals dot slash. Is that saying that it's uh, from? I'm maybe I'm an idiot. I don't know. It's just a current folder. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know that, I guess. Yeah, if you use, uh, you probably know the double dot notation too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just the same as that. It's, it's just the current direction instead of the parent. Yes, it's basically the same as not having dots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like everything, and that's okay. <laughs> awesome. Sorry about so, that. Is it absolutely impossible to share CSS between like shadow trees or posts? Like, can you well, say so you have two different shadow DOM components and you want to share those CSS to share between them? Do you have to duplicate that style? Um, are they the same kind of widget? Would they be? like one's an image slider and one's like a single full page image viewer or something. Uh, like there would be some sort of shared styles there that you can normally get away with the same Well, if you could load external styles with a URL, I'm pretty sure you could. And I think okay. you can, it's just I didn't actually try, so I'm guessing right now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I assume you can, because you can put link uh, elements in your body and they'll load correctly. Yeah, yeah. so I'm going to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> By yeah. the same token, when you when you've got the the hover, or not the, the host, is the host the element that's outside of the shadow DOM that's hosting? Is that actually so? If you have a style on the host, that's say on the main web page, right? Mm -hmm. It can affect styles within the shadow DOM element, the, the web component itself. Uh, like from outside the web component, that it's got to live somewhere, and that yes. somewhere is the host. Which is not the web component itself, it's outside of it. Yeah, no, but the point of the host is to be able to change the surrounding DOM objects. Not at, like the, the, you can't just modify the stuff inside, you can't modify the shadow things. But with the CSS rules, you can kind of modify the parent elements. Because I guess the thing is, if you had a, you're, are you aware of like, if your image slider, your, your buttons have a gray background, a gray color, and then you put that component on a singleton page that has that gray background and you lose those buttons, is there, do you know of a way to say, you know, in this container, this component should actually have a background color, a button color of X, or do you have to specify that in the component itself? Is there a way where you have to maybe jump over a couple hurdles but to specify in this context, this component should have these styles. Outside of setting those styles in the component itself, are you, do you know? So if, I, so if you set up like a font family on the body, uh -huh. does that cascade into the shadow DOM component or no? No. There's no, no way to do that that you're aware of? Um, I don't think this, this post stuff here. There are ways or is that what the host yes. is for? Or? Select and style elements hosting a shadow. Okay. I think there are ways of piercing the shadow out. Okay. There are. I yeah, yeah. No, there, it would make there, sense there are. I just have to be. You have to be explicit about it, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah. So Which yeah, you, still, you can yeah. actually. You can't do it on accident. You know? uh, that's what this whole shadow <laughs> pseudo element is, oh. and I didn't okay. dive down on that part. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, it makes sorry. it stands to reason that you'd be able to do that. I just, you know, when you said that you couldn't. Well. You have to go out of your way to do it. Like you really. Yes, yeah. I didn't. I didn't want to make an assumption um, that might have been horribly wrong. Yeah. So we can still screw it up. Yay! <laughs> 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 but you can't do it with just base CSS classes, and I think that's kind of a little point. Yeah, you can't just.